Hey everybody, I am out in my backyard. I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea, but I wanted to give you a little visual, um, I don't know, variation, uh, whatever, but it seems to be helicopter central up here in Sunny Slope today. We often have a lot of activity that way. We're a very mixed bag of a neighborhood and we have uh, wonderful Sesame Street neighbors and also some crime. So anyway, hopefully that won't interrupt us. Um, I came to talk to you a little bit about the, the why of this class. Um, clearly there's a subject matter and topic and all that stuff and I'm not going to go over it because that's what we're reading about and that's what our you know, course outcomes are about and so forth. But there is a, an underlying why that has to do with why are we teaching it this particular way. And I'm feeling like some of you are understanding and maybe some of you are not, which suggests to me that I need to be really explicit about why I'm teaching you the way I'm teaching you. So every one of our modules uh, approaches whatever the subject matter is like this. First we ask, what do you already know about this topic? Okay, And then we have you share that out and we see that different people know different things about the same topic. It's kind of like that old story about the five blind men put up uh, against a, um, an elephant and said, you know, describe what you touch. And the one who touched the leg said he felt he was touching the trunk of a tree. And the one who touched the ear felt like he was touching the palm a leaf, uh, you know, the frond of a palm. And so on and so forth. And so uh, what we learn when we hear what everybody else thinks about something is that our own way of looking at it might be limited or narrow or partial. It might be brilliant, but it might be only part of the story. And especially when we're working with communities which are filled with diverse people and diverse demographics and backgrounds and skill sets and experiences, um, everybody's viewpoint is not only important, but when you put them together, you get a much fuller, much richer, much more detailed and nuanced picture of what the community is really like. And in our case, uh, when we put together all of your really interesting background experiences and your, your work expertise and the things that you, you know, you're passionate about, and we look at these subject matters through your own lens, we see how much there is to know. Um, so that part's good. Diversity and giving us a bigger picture is really important. The other thing about figuring out that we only have a piece of it is that um, it, give, it opens our minds to the fact that, there, that we might need to adjust the way we think about something uh, based on additional incoming information. So you have the incoming information from your fellow students and that's piece two. And then we have incoming information from our authors, our, our texts that we're reading, the articles that I have chosen, if it's not a text, uh, the videos, whatever. And that is more of the, um, you know, the theory or the, um, the writing of academics, people who have researched it, what we, where we are on our knowledge base our studied knowledge base rather than our just experiential or anecdotal knowledge but but our actual researched knowledge and now we add that into the mix and we come back and we say okay how does that compare to all this other stuff what does it have to offer us and and I want to be quick to point out to you um, and maybe you've seen this because we've got two completely different authors coming from two completely different places and that was intentional um, that even though I give you something to read and it's by somebody who's a researcher or somebody who is really an authority or well respected, doesn't mean that, that what they do and think works everywhere. Um, if you think about it, theories and experiences and approaches and ways of framing things, they are like tools in a toolbox and you are in a certain situation in a certain community and you want to find the tools or the theories that seem to match the situation and then those will help you. So then we're going to add all this kind of um, more, uh, I don't know, studied, if you want to just put it that way, information into our, our packet of knowledge, the experiences of all of your classmates, your own experiences, and this. And we're kind of going to bat it around and see how it feels and whether 
you know, what we're learning from other people would have fit in the situations that we had, when to accept something, when to reject something. And, and I want to get back to the fact that the two authors that you are reading, um, the two main authors, one of them comes from a very, um, we'll call it a communal position, and the other one comes from a more pragmatic, capitalistic kind of uh, position. They both feel the community is important. They both feel like involving the community is important, but you can tell from the way they're talking that they have different theories underlying their own um, opinions. So let me segue from what I just said about different theories underlying uh, their, their opinions. We in this next module are actually going to look at what our own idea, uh, what our own theory of social change is. Now, a theory is not a definition. And I hasten to say this, and I also gave you this whole long thing about what a theory is, um, that I use the weather because I think everybody's already familiar with the how, how of it, so that you can not focus so much on, ooh, that's cool how rain happens, um, but that you can more focus on um, what it is that I mean by a theory. So when I ask you to articulate your theory of social change, I'm, and how social innovation might bring social change, I'm not asking you to define social change for me. I'm asking you to tell me what things you think have to happen to get to social change. So if X, then social change. Or A, X, B, plus B, Y equals, you know, uh, C, social change. So anyway, um, I encourage you to uh, actually go through the example of um, of the the um, weather and try to understand what I mean by theory before you try your hand at writing one. Okay, and what else I want to say about this is not just um, that we understand that a theory is not a definition, um, but also I want to point out that when we were looking at the concept of innovation. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a whole bunch of you, you were all asked to actually look at your own writing. You were looking at an uh, innovative project or program that you had actually been involved with or heard about, and you wrote about it for your assignment. And I asked you to list two to four things that made it innovative. And then in the following week, I asked you to take those two to four things those are the things that inherently, internally, inside you, you felt made a project innovative. And tell me, based on what those things were, what do you think, you know, what do you think being innovative requires? And some of you did that, and some of you instead took Schumpeter's uh, elements of innovation, if you want. So I want you to remember this time that literally I am not looking for anybody else's idea of a theory of social change. I am looking for what you think personally has to be there for change to be created or to emerge. And so I don't want you to find a theory of social change on the web and give it to me. I want you to ask yourself if I'm just thinking about it. And there's no wrong answer here. You're not going to get downgraded for having an answer that ultimately the class doesn't agree with. And I'm not sure there is a right or wrong answer because I think what we're going to find is that depending on what the context and the politics and the environment and the resources available and the level of aggravation about something, that requires a tipping point for change that we're going to see that there are a lot of different circumstances that could lead to change. So I am not here to judge your ideas. I am asking you to ask yourself, what is it that I already think? That's what this first um, discussion seven is about. What is it that I already think? And if you answer that question, then you will know what your bias is about what it takes to get to social change or any change maybe. And if you're having trouble in a certain situation, um, bringing about change, if people are being stubborn about it or the community doesn't seem to want to go there even though they said they did, then you know that the things you're trying might not be adequate and you might need to adjust your theory of social change for this situation. And hopefully some of your classmates 
and later some of the readings ideas will give you some tools to do that work. All right, that's all I wanted to say, that this is really about you. Don't make it about Schumpeter or anybody else. And, um, and that we are actually going through a pedagogical process that upends your biases so you can see them, enlarges the possibilities that you hold in your mind so that you have more ideas to change, choose from and to help you be more creative. Um, and then we're going to... Uh, throw some actual researchy stuff up against the wall and see if it sticks for you. It might not. We're going to be reading uh, Paulo Freire's stuff uh, pretty soon. And he was uh, a revolutionary in a way um, in his time and in his culture. And you might very well ask, uh, just because it worked for him in that place and in that time and in that political environment, would it work today? Would it work in America? Would it work in, um, in, in Colorado City? Would, would it work in Manhattan? These are questions that you need to ask. All right, so I am done, except I have to show you my garden, which uh, isn't very much. This is like my fallen over garden thing. And I don't know if you can see, but like I've got a ton of eggplants growing here. This eggplant uh, display is courtesy of the seeds from last year's garden, and it is just doing its own thing. I mean, oop, where is it? Look at this thing. And there's like a huge one back there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Baba Ganoush. I, I can't find the camera. I'm thinking Baba Ganoush. I don't know about you. Anyway, thank you very, very much for um, looking for the thing that lets me turn off. Thank you very much for paying attention to me. And I hope that this clears up what it is I'm trying to do and why I keep asking you for your own opinions. I will see you on Canvas.